Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahavir Yang Karavavahai Tejas Vinavadi Tamastu Mavid Vishavahai Aum Shantihi 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 Aum Tisro Ratri Yadavat Sir Greheme Nashnan Brahmanati Tir Namasyaha Namaste Stu Brahman Swasti Stu Tasmat Pratitrin Varan Vrinishva O Brahmana, since you have lived in my house for three nights without food, a guest and adorable person as you are, let my salutations be to you, and let good accrue to me by averting the fault arising from that lapse. Ask for three boons, one in respect of each night. Namaste. So here, finally, death speaks. And what kind of a person is he? What kind of a being is he? Well, first of all, he's an expansion of Shiva. Shiva as Ta. Huh? Gives distress to people by taking away their lives. But the problem is we created these lives in the first place. We fabricated them. So, by the law of nature, what goes up what will come down. What was made will become unmade. Who is born will also die. That's the law of the universe. That's the law of time. But since we are dealing here with a divine being, it's really extraordinary his attitude towards Nachiketa. He's very apologetic, extremely polite, and follows the principles of dharma to the letter. I mean, Yamaraj is also known as Dharmaraj, the king or the demigod in charge of dharma, which is proper behavior, niti. We went over that last time. Niti and suniti in the names of Shiva are law and order, proper behavior, and also the administration of that truth. So he is both. He's the, the judge, the jury, and the executioner, literally. So this is death. This is Shiva as death. And what does he say? Brahman, O oh Brahmana, Yat avapsihi, you have lived in my house, Greheme, Tisra Ratri, for three nights, Anashram, without eating, Atitihi, a guest, Namasyaha, worthy of being saluted. Therefore, Namate astru, Brahman. O Brahmana, obeisances unto you. Svasti me tasmat, therefore let me gain good fortune by treating you according to the rules of Dharma. And so therefore you can ask, Vrnishva, ask for Trinvaran, three boons, Prati, appropriately. In other words, one boon for each night you've gone without food. Now, they see, this is death himself. He's a Shivanga. He's a limb of God. Shiva. So powerful, so important. And yet, he's treating this Brahmin boy like royalty. Huh? Well, because the boy came to his house voluntarily... He came as a guest. 
most people come to death's house by being dragged by his servants, the Yamadutas. See? So they are treated much differently than those who come voluntarily. Those who come voluntarily are treated as guests. That means they have certain privileges, especially brahmanas. Now, we've been over this before. A brahmana is not one who is born in a particular family, but one who is seriously engaged in realization of Brahman, in living Brahman, Brahmachari, one who is living in Brahman and by Brahman, and who is Brahman, who realizes himself, aham brahmasmi. These aren't just words, but they point to a certain experience, a certain consciousness, which we call turiya. Turiya means awareness of awareness, objectless awareness, not consciousness, because consciousness always has an object. Therefore, it's dual, dualistic, subject and object, actually triune, the subject, the object, and their relation. So this is an ontological triple. This is what is necessary for the actual existence of the world, the body, life, and everything. <laughs> so consciousness is not part of Brahman. Consciousness is actually part of the creation. You could say it's Saguna Brahman. But Nirguna Brahman, which is Shiva, is beyond all this. And it is pure awareness of awareness. One who has realized this is on such a different platform. Later on in the Upanishad, death tells Nachiketa that one who is on this path, who worships Brahman, becomes worshipable, adorable in the world of Brahman. So in the world of Brahman means in Shiva's world, in Shakti Loka, even Shiva Loka, which are really the same thing. <laughs> Shiva Loka, as we pointed out many times, is Sushupti consciousness. In Sushupti consciousness, is the origin of dreams. And dreams are the origin of waking consciousness. So, as we think, therefore, that we become. See, this is the principle of manifestation. This is the principle of paticca samuppada taught by the Buddha. That existence begins with non-existence. Well, apparent non-existence. Because even if you are in the void, if you're in sushupti, if you're in emptiness, where nothing can become, nothing can go into existence, you're still there. And that means it's a state of consciousness because you are perceiving nothingness, emptiness, the void. So because it's a perception, even though it's a non-perception, it's part of consciousness. It's an object of consciousness. Oh, I'm seeing nothing. I'm experiencing the void. You can know this. So, as an object of knowledge, it must be consciousness because it has to be dualistic. You see, hey, once you understand consciousness, you can deal with everything. You can know everything because you understand the root ontology that is at the root or basis of everything. So, in emptiness, in nothingness, one says, let me become something. And that gives rise to a dream, a fabrication. Shankara. So then this sankara evolves into name and form and then consciousness. Consciousness and name and form. Name and form and consciousness. They go round and round like a little vortex, a little whirlpool, creating the senses and their objects, the quality of existence of that individual's life. 
and so on. But then at a certain point, once that has evolved into an adult human being, it has to begin to devolve back into its original form of emptiness, of nothingness. So this is sansara. This is the round or the wheel of birth and death. This is what we are searching for liberation from. This is what the spiritual path is all about. First of all, recognizing that we're in a trap. We're in this cycle of becoming and non-becoming, birth and death. So as soon as we realize that, we can start to understand how to get out, how to get liberated, moksha. And what is that moksha? Attaining non-dual Brahman. Sushupti, then beyond Sushupti is Turiya, non-dual consciousness, in which the world is never born. So this is the highest view. This is the highest realization. And we can approach that realization through the heavenly worlds. The heavenly worlds, swarga or heaven, uh, swarga as it's used in this Upanishad, means the pure creation. That creation which begins at the beginning of the universe and continues without a break all the way to the end. Now, the heavenly worlds, the worlds of the demigods, which are also sometimes called Svarga, are sometimes manifest, sometimes unmanifest. During the days of Brahma, they manifest. Then this is called the Mahakalpa. And at the end of a Mahakalpa, the end of the day of Brahman, the night of Brahma sees all these worlds plunged into darkness, unmanifest. And then again, at the beginning of Brahma's day, they come into being. So the cycle of birth and death of samsara applies even to the worlds, even to the planets of the demigods and the demigods themselves. It is only the higher realms of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva and their close devotees that are spared from this periodic devastation. Therefore, at least we should aspire to the heavenly worlds, to the pure creation, to that swarga, that heavenly world that is never destroyed until the very, very end of the creation, which is, you know, billions and billions of years from now. So it doesn't really worry us. And this is what the whole spiritual path is all about and why we have to reach a cordial relationship and understanding with death because death is not our enemy. Death is our friend because he's saving us from being caught in the conditioned consciousness of material existence eternally. See? Even the destruction of the entire material universe is a kind of mercy, a kind of liberation. And so we should be very grateful, very, very grateful and appreciative of death because he is the means, actually, by which Shiva delivers liberation. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aum Namah Shivaya.